for the people who tell me it's easy to talk when you know you make you make a lot of money from your streams on Spotify, I will tell them, I make a lot of money from my stream on Spotify because the same way I'm building the club shutter, that's exactly how I built my, my catalog on Spotify. I have probably 400 to 500 song, songs that belong to me that are streaming every day. And some of these songs, they just generate one euro per day. But if you multiply it by 500, that's how you start making real money. And same thing for, the, then the people would say, yeah, but yeah, you, when you were doing all these songs, it was easy because you had, you, you had a lot of shows. And I would be like, yeah, I had a lot of shows because I work on the Keisha brand for a long time. I started doing my show, I was 18. It was 1992 in Brussels at Ecume de Nuit. That's when I did my first show in front of people. And since then, between 1992 and 1996, I performed for free for four years. Every Friday, every Saturday in Paris. We went to every party, freestyle, freestyle, freestyle shows. And then we started having songs. And then I have some songs that were hits and I didn't know how to release music. And some, I have songs like Give Me The Max So I Can Rock, they never came out, but everybody knew that song in 92. 92, 93, 94. I have, I have me dreadlocks performing in clubs. So when my album came out, it was not a stranger. It was somebody that built his name from performing every week and at the same time going to school. And what happened was that when the album came out, it sold 100,000. That's a million dollars, euros. And this even worse, at that time it was in francs. So one album was like 100 francs. So that was like hundreds of millions, but Let's, let's keep talking in Euros. I, I, I do my album, 98, comes out, does 100,000, it gets its gold. Um, I get a Sony and, and, and the label where I was signed to, they make a million. They make a million and they give me 100K. And wow, amazing, 100K, that's beautiful, right? But me, I'm like, wait a minute. There's 900K that just... So what did I do? I took my 100K, I bought a new computer, I bought a microphone, I bought keyboards. I bought a new sampler. I bought 50,000 euros of equipment because back in the days it cost a lot of money. I bought 50,000 of equipment and then I started doing a lot of shows. And every time I would do a show, I would, you know, buy myself some nice stuff, whatever. But I would also put some money into gear. I would always upgrade my gear. Sorry. Second album was a failure. So I think we only sold 5,000. Yeah. Um, I, I left for four years. I moved to Belgium. I was still doing some shows, but... I created the uh, Angel City. I started making the music that, those music that you hear in the back. And I would sell them in the site called mp3.com. And I would just do singles or small albums of 10 songs. And I would sell them in mp3 to rappers who were trying to do demos. And I would have a lot of, and it was my first 
independent stuff. When I came back in 2003 with my album It's a Love, 2004 with African Bohemian and 2006 with Legendary, uh, those are my three most popular albums. I came out as an independent book on a, on a 60 40 deal with uh, Section Zook. So now instead of making 6%, 8% per album sold, I was making 60% and they were making they were making 40%. And I have access in, in exchange, I have access to studio, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And they were doing all the marketing, etc. And me, I was making money from my show and I was and I, and I signed a deal and I said I want hundred percent from the digital. And back then nobody cared about the digital. So they said yes. Today they're like, fuck. But I start making money from putting my mu music on CD Baby. And CD Baby put my music on iTunes, put my music on, 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 on the different platforms you had at that time. And I was like, hey, look, I made 50, 50 euros on, on, uh, on iTunes. That's so cool. And they were like, lol. Yo, I'm putting my, hey, there's this new thing called YouTube. I just put my videos there. And they were like, yeah, but don't put the music there. It's like, we, we're trying to sell DVDs. And I was like, no, 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 this is the future. And I stopped working on my, on my YouTube channel since 2005 or 2006. And this is the difference between the way I work and the way other people work. Because with the money from my free albums, I went back to my first label and I said, hey, I would like to buy the masters. And because for the for the the, the 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 guys who produced my first two albums, yeah, you know the albums have been sold already. Nobody's gonna buy more. So yeah, whatever. Yeah, you can have your albums. We don't care. Like, give us uh, something. And because for them, they were like, yeah, we already sold all these albums. Uh, we don't know what he's gonna do with them, but. Yeah, maybe he's gonna print another 500 and make his money. Yeah, it's okay, take your albums. So now I own all my masters. So I put everything in the digital and all of a sudden, instead of having like only three albums of Keisha in the digital, I have now five albums of Keisha. And everybody who, who didn't have the chance to buy my CDs of my first albums, they now have a chance to buy them on iTunes. And all of a sudden, Instead of making, I don't know how much I was making at that time, I was making, I don't know, 200 euros per month on, on, from iTunes, I stopped making 250 because a lot of people wanted to have my first album or some people had it and they lost it or whatever, or somebody stole it from them. Then I started producing other artists. And again, a lot of artists that I, I, I grew up with, I grew up not uh, as, a, as a child, but I grew up uh, uh, professionally with a lot of them. When they made a lot of money, they would meet, they would go to the clubs, perform, meet a nice girl and take the money from the show and travel with that nice girl somewhere because they wanted to impress them. Then they would, you know, they would put all their money in trying to fuck nice girls. And uh, or they would uh, try to impress people that don't like them. So they would go to the club, buy bottles and show off, show off for other people. Me, I was like, uh, uh, my week was Friday. I'm taking the plane, I'm going or the train. And I'm going either somewhere in France or Belgium or Holland or Switzerland or somewhere in the Benelux, Germany or Portugal or Africa or in the US, I'm going to perform. I perform Friday, I perform Saturday. Sunday, I'm in my plane coming back. Uh, all the money I made, I didn't touch it. Coming back with my money, put it in the bank, uh, pay stuff that I have to pay. Rule number one, paying the rent. Pay the rent. I would not go to club to to pay for, for bottles 
to impress people that I don't like and they don't like me. I would go to clubs where people would be, oh my God, Keisha is here. Let's offer you a bottle. Thank you. And I would drink for free. And the thing is, I don't drink alcohol. So usually it would be the friend around me who would drink those bottles. Me, I would drink juice. And everywhere I would go, because I'm, I'm cool, because the owners, they like me, because back in the days, uh, even when it exploded, I accepted to sing for low prices for them. Everywhere I would go, people would offer me drinks. So I was not spending my money to impress people I don't like and they don't like me. So this money, I would do something else with it. Then on Sunday, I'm out of the club. Monday, I'm in the studio with Sumia. Tuesday, I'm in the studio with Sumia. Wednesday, I'm in the studio with Elisio. Thursday, I'm in the studio with ABG. Uh, Friday, I'm in the plane again. And that would be my week. And I would be creating content, 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 content. Then 2003, all these albums came out. My album number three, Sumia's album, Elisio's album, ABG's album in 2004. What happened? Everything exploded. Now I was making money from my content, but I was also making money from other artists' content. And I own all that music. And I was also creating the beats for all these artists. There was one year when I made the beats, 100% of the beats from four albums. What happens when you do that? When you do that, you end up having four albums of 15 songs so that's uh 60 songs now you have 60 songs where you are the author or the composer what happens every time you sell a cd you have to understand one thing in a cd of 10 euros you have two euros that are uh the cost of fabrication inside of the cost of fabrication fabrication there's one euro that is um the money from the copyright so every time you print one cd uh, to sell for 10 euros you have to pay two euros per cds one for the creation of the cd and another one to pay for the composers and authors so let's say i do an album of sumia plus an album from uh, elisio plus an album from me plus an album from abg in one year and we sell uh, roughly 60,000 of me plus another 40,000 from Elisio and ABG as small independent artists. We have to print 100,000 CDs to, to sell them. So when you print 100,000 CD, it's going to cost you 200,000. Inside of those 200,000, there's 100,000 that goes to the Copyright Society, SASEM, or SPA if you're in Portugal, or PRS if you're in London, or ASCAP, BMI if you are, or SABAM if you're in Belgium, whatever. Those 100,000, they go to those companies, and those companies send the money to the writers and composer. Well, I'm the writer and composer as well from my songs, and I have 50% of all the songs from these artists since I composed all the songs. So after one year, when the money comes back, you receive a check from 50000 And now you are making money from copyrights, you are making money from radio plays, you are making money from sales, and you are performing. And every time your artists are performing, the artists you work with or the artists that you, you created a song for, the clubs have to pay the copyright as well. And this money comes back to you as well. So... All this means that if you work hard on your, on your craft, you can start generating money, but it doesn't come in one day. And this is my problem with the people of today. They don't want to put the hours 